Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this talk on AIML and data analytics in the context of non real time break and the NWDAF. And my name is Sandeep, and I work uh, for Arna Networks. I'm part of the engineering team in the Arna Networks. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Banu, and I work for Arna Networks and part of the engineering team. The agenda for today is that we are going to uh, give an introduction of NWDAF and NRTRIC. And then we are going to talk about uh, analytics uh, platform architecture, which is a unified architecture which can implement both the NWDAF and the NRTRIC use case. And followed by that, we have a demo. And we are going to demonstrate the NF load use case uh, in the NWDAF. NWDAF is the analytics function in the 5G core. And uh, as the name says, NWDAF provides analytics information to other network functions, OAM and the application function. NWDAF is by definition a network function and it has to register itself with the NRF like other network functions. And for registration, it has to provide the analytics ID, which is then later used by other network functions in order to discover the required NWDAF function. The kind of information that NWDAF provides is the statistics and the prediction, and it supports both the subscription model and one-time request model. And the data that the NWDAF uh, consumes in order to derive this analytics comes from the application functions uh, 5G core network functions, OAM, and it collects all sorts of data, infrastructure related data, UE related data. And then, and that is what basically it, it uses in order to derive the statistics and the analytics. Non arteric is more of a platform, and non arteric is a platform which provides the analytics for the uh, RAN functions. And non arteric is, a, is an extensible platform, and we can add more functionality to this uh, platform by the means of the R apps. These R apps are analytics applications which are backed by the ML models. And these R apps provide the policies and enrichment information to the components running in the real time RIC over the A1 interface. What we see on the screen is high level block diagram of the non RT RIC in the SMO framework. And there are a bunch of components in the non RT RIC which manage the R apps, manage the life cycle of the R apps, and the uh, model inferencing in the R apps. The non RT RIC also has uh, components which uh, manage the A1 policy. And these are the components which get the latest and greatest policies from the R apps and then apply them to the real time break over the A1 interface. Now with the introduction of NWDAF and non RT RIC, we are going to look upon the commonalities between the uh, NWDAF and non RT RIC. Common requirements uh, uh, rather so I will not go over the uh, differences because they are obvious, but what it takes to implement the non arteric and NWDAF is uh, what we need is a MLOps kind of platform, which will be used for training the uh, ML models. And these ML models comprise uh, comprises the NF, uh, NWDAF and the R apps in the non arteric uh, uh, platform. So we have come up with a unified uh, architecture wherein we implement both the NWDAF and the non real time rig. And this slide shows the on app components that our architecture uh, is leveraging. So to give some names, so we have uh, the collectors, uh, different sorts of collectors from the on app DCAE project. We have SDNR, which is the SMO and which implements the non real time RIC 
the A1 policy manager and the R apps uh, manager. The DMAP bus is the Kafka bus, which is again another uh, uh, on-app project. And then we have Acumos. Acumos is used as the uh, ML catalog. And this hosts the machine learning models which are trained in the external ML ops uh, platform. And then we plan to interface with the Acumos by, by creating a model influencing uh, a model influencing layer, which is going to be a microservice in our platform. And this microservice is going to interact with the Acumos, get the, uh, uh, get the microservices, uh, which are, which are, which consist of these ML models and deploy these microservices across the uh, target clusters as NWDAF in the NWDAF use case and as R apps in the non real time break use case. This slide shows the uh, implementation of the NWDAF. On the top layer, we see the MLOps platform and the Acumos. MLOps platforms provisions the uh, model designers to train the ML models. And it also has the functionality of uh, retraining, retraining the ML models, running the data pipelines for data transformation. And the source of data is uh, data for this uh, MLOps platform is this data lake, which has the data from all the uh, 5G core network functions, OEM, and the infrastructure related data, which we plan to collect through the uh, Prometheus servers. The box on the left is AMCOP. AMCOP is Arna's multi-cluster orchestration platform. So AMCOP has the DCA components which uh, which are mainly the DCA collectors and we plan to implement this model influencing microservice which is going to uh, interface with the Acumos platform and it is going to consume the ML model microservices which are there in the uh, ML uh, catalog hosted by Acumos and it will perform the model influencing in the NWDAF in the target clusters. On the right hand side we see uh, edge cluster where we see the 5G core network functions are deployed. So these network functions and the Prometheus services are deployed and managed by the AMCOP platform. The data collectors in the AMCOP platform can subscribe for the NF related data through the NEF. And then this data is then uh, uploaded into the uh, data lake, which is then consumed by the uh, machine learning uh, workflows in the MLOps uh, platform for the purpose of training the ML models. And uh, Prometheus servers, which are deployed in these target clusters are configured to scrape uh, the container level and load level, uh, node level metrics. And Prometheus, and uh, for the Prometheus, the remote write endpoint is again this data lake. And this data is used by CPU prediction, memory prediction, like ML models. Very similar to the previous uh, diagram, this slide shows the implementation of Nanoteric. And what we have here, uh, the differences uh, here are, so the model inferencing service now is not deploying the ML models in the N, uh, NWDAFs. It is rather deploying the ML uh, models in the R apps of the non-real-time rig. And the DCA collectors are the West collectors, uh, file uh, uh, collectors are collecting the RAN related data over the O1 interface, which is uploaded to the data lake and later consumed for the machine learning uh, uh, purposes. Similar to the previous uh, slide, there is Prometheus for collecting the infrastructure related data. And all this data is used by the ML, uh, MLOps platform and the trained models are then sent to the catalog in the Acumos, which is then consumed by this uh, by the uh, model inferencing microservice, and hence and this is how the R apps are uh, deployed and managed. So now with this, we can uh, move on to the next section, which is about the demo of the NF load use case in the NWDAF.
yeah hi everyone uh, now we will see the nw dash uh, and a flow use case demo so prior to that i just wanted to give some information on NWDAF and a flow use case um, and a flow use cases um, NWDAF supports multiple services out of that one of one of it is in a flow use case so in a flow use case it collects the uh, data from oam and nrf mainly these are the two data sources for this and uh, kind of output analytics it provides is the uh, status of the NFs and the resource uses of the status like CPU, memory, and storage, and the load path. And it provides analytics in the form of two. One is the historical data in the form of statistics and, and also the predictions. So that's about the NF load use case. Yeah, let's see our implementation. So uh, these, are, these are the, uh, on a high level, if you see, these are the three models which are uh, visible on this uh, and a flow use case primarily. This is the blue box is our NWDAF uh, implementation. And uh, apart from that, it has the NRF. NRF is one of the 5G core network function, uh, network repository function. And the AF, so this AF is uh, application function. In this use case, this acts as a consumer of the NWDAF. So let's start from uh, uh, NRF first. So NRF is, uh, as I mentioned, NRF is one of the 5G core network repository function. Uh, all the network functions within the 5G core will make an entry here so that if any a network function want to do a lookup, then it will call the NRF. So in this uh, demo, so we have used the free 5G NRF. That is the implementation we have used and uh, application function. So application function is basically like a consumer of the NWDAF in this case. So it gets the prediction output and it simply logs it. But in real world scenario, uh, these consumers are like gets the data and it takes the various uh, actions like infrastructure scaling and feeding this information to some, some other third party applications. So that is, um, AF, so in this uh, AF basically we simply acts as a consumer. We are not doing any closed loop scenarios here. It simply logs it. And this is, we have implemented. It acts as a client. And coming to the NWDAF part. So we have developed as a part of the POC. So the thing is now NWDAF has various building blocks out of which we have uh, implemented uh, three layers in this case. The first layer is the service API. Service API in NWDAF uh, as per the 3GPP standards, it provides the two kinds of APIs. One is the event subscription, where uh, others will subscribe to the event and get the NWDAF will notify uh, based on the subscriptions. And the other one is the analytics info, which is like uh, request responses. Uh, so we have implemented analytics info and we will see the same in our demo as well. And the next part is the analytics uh, uh, layer. So here uh, we have implemented uh, uh, one of the CPU prediction model. So basically this gives the CPU predictions uh, for the given inputs. And this model is uh, trained based on the offline data. So we don't have any real time data. So that's why if you see here, data collectors are in red. Ideally, it has to subscribe to the various network functions, but uh, so we have collected the data. The data is available offline here. So this data is being used for the training and also the service API used to get the predictions of this. So with this, let's uh, I will just explain the flow and after that I will show the demo. So the first part is uh, as and when the NWDAF comes up, it registers itself to the NRF. In the registration, it gives the endpoint of the NWDAF, uh, NWDAF. So that is called as NF register. This is a 3GPP specific API. And once it registers, uh, after that, it starts serving the request. So that is the NWDAF part. So uh, once it's registered, so AF, which is a consumer, comes into the picture and it asks NRF. So it makes a call of NF, NF discovery and asks for the all the NWDAFs which are registered with this NRF. 
So NRF will give the response. In the response, it gives the endpoint of the NWDF. From the NWDF endpoint, it prepares the analytics info request and it calls the NWDF. Upon receiving the request, uh, NWDF, uh, by looking at the data points, it uh, calls a CPU prediction model and it gets the uh, CPU prediction output from this analytics uh, layer. And the service info analytics info API is creates the response in the form of RGPP standards uh, for the given NF and it uh, sends it back to the AF. AF will simply logs it. So this is the flow. So I'll be showing the demo right now. And yeah, just to explain the deployment and configuration. So the deployment is uh, we are, we'll be using uh, Arna's uh, AMCOP platform. So this simplifies the uh, deployment and the configuration part. And all the network functions what we have seen uh, in uh, NWDF, NRF, and application functions can be deployed on multiple edge clusters as well. That we can do it with AMCOP. But for this demo, we'll be deploying all this in a single edge cluster. And we'll see the interaction between these two with the help of AMCOP platform. So I already have a pre-recorded uh, uh, demo, which I'll be trying it right now. So if you just have a quick look at it, uh, what is the setup is going to look like? Uh, AMCOP platform, which is up and running. And we have onboarded one of the edge cluster to this. Uh, to this edge cluster, all the uh, NFs or AFs will be orchestrated. So this is our AMCOP platform UI. So if you see uh, the highlighted one, I have onboarded one of the edge cluster. We will create a uh, service now. So first one is the uh, NRF service, if I just NRF service. Service will be having multiple applications. The first application is NRF application. Uh, so application has been created, but we need to upload the corresponding Helm charts. So we have created a Helm charts and I'm uploading it right now. Okay, now NRF it depends on the MongoDB. So now I'm creating the MongoDB application. Again, the corresponding Helm charts has to be uh, uploaded here. So I'm doing that right now. Now NRF service has been created and it is having two applications, NRF and the MongoDB. Now we will go to the next service creation, which is related to NWDAP. So again, uh, it will be having an NWDAP application first. So corresponding Helm charts, which I'm uploading it for whatever the implementation we have done. And just for the simplicity, I am adding the AF application function also as another application to the service. So yeah, so this we can create a altogether new service as well. Okay, so now NWDAF service also created design time is over. Now we will go to the runtime, which is service instance creation. The first one is the NRF, creating the NRF instance. Okay, uh, so uh, while creating the instance, we can select the target edge cluster. I have, as I mentioned earlier, I have already onboarded one of the edge cluster. I'm selecting the same cluster now. The next one is the NWDAF. So even for NWDAF also, we are selecting the target edge clusters. So 
So now we have created uh, both the service instances. So uh, just before creating the actual instance, that means we can orchestrate. So we will check the target edge cluster to see whether it has any uh, pods running or not. So you see right now there is no pods are running. So now we will continue to watch it. So service instance has been created for NRF. Yeah, now it's orchestrated. It's up and running. NRF. Now the next one is the NWDAF. We instantiate NWDAF now. If you see now, it is instantiated uh, total three. So analytics AF and NWDAF and NWDAF internally depends on another pod, which is CPU prediction model, microservice. All are up and running. So these two are for NRF and, uh, and this is for the NWDAF. Let's check the NWDAF logs just to see how exactly the interaction. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, the first step is to register with the NRF. So the highlighted one is the NRF registration. It's successfully registered to the NRF and it has given the endpoint to that. So after that, it starts serving the request. Now you will see one of the requests which is handled by the NWDAF. So the highlighted one, if you see, it receives the uh, request and it's serve the request. And okay, so, so it internally calls the CPU prediction model microservice. So that is what the highlighted one. So it gets the response from the CPU model microservice and the response will be embedded into the analytics info response. Now that's it about NWDAF logs. Now we will see AF logs. So that means from the client perspective. So this, in this case, our AF application function, which is running periodically. So we will take only the one occurrence. So first, first thing is like, it will go and call the NRF to get the NWDAF endpoint. That is what highlighted. It cuts the NWDF endpoint at the endpoint, and it calls the uh, NWDF with uh, analytics info request. So it receives the response from the NWDF. It cuts the uh, what is the CPU prediction and what is the corresponding instance ID and uh, the corresponding status, like how, all those information. And simply logging it. This is the, the clear view of the data what we received from the NWDAF. Yeah, that is that's pretty much on the uh, demo side. 